everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Cavs HQ Happy Hour. It is presented by Budweiser. Don and Rafa with you here today. Hope everybody's having a great Friday. Hope everybody is hanging in there. Rafa, how about the shirts presented by Budweiser? Very nice, right? It, it, it looks good on me. I, I was a little worried. I guess quarantine has been good to me because it, it actually fits. <laughs> Everything looks good on you. We got these two as well. These are yep. fantastic. I, these are not the first. Uh, <laughs> these are not the first shirts or uniforms that we have worn on the show. <laughs> I think the first one. I think it began with the JR shirts in season one. That was our first wardrobe change. And I think our first <laughs> wardrobe malfunction that came right along with it. <laughs> I guess I have nothing to do with getting your side, your t-shirts this yeah. time. Yours actually fit. <laughs> for, yeah, for those who don't know the story, and you could, I'll let you finish the story, but we were interviewing J.R. Smith shortly after the championship, shortly after J.R.'s shirtless parade, I guess you could say, <laughs> his shirtless, his month of shirtlessness. And, uh, and we got the shirts, right? plan was to have JR on have it for a segment and then when we came back we were gonna be wearing our the, the t-shirts that were made with his with his chest right his and back just all the tattoos unfortunately the order got a little mixed up and then we got a, a, a an adult extra large and a, and a youth extra large <laughs> which I which I didn't know of before the show right which I didn't know anything about before the show began it was all Rafa's Rafa's baby of course the best thing about it is that he was so tired on you, he looked like you actually were <laughs> tattoos. <laughs> mine, mine had a few wrinkles in it, so you could tell it was a t-shirt. Look, yours look natural. Even JR, I, I may have been imagining it, but even JR was like, oh my god. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that was our first wardrobe. We've had the Tito's uh, winter wear on, not necessarily on the show, but connected, of course, with the Cavaliers, which was nice which was a little toasty particularly in the studio the winter mozgov hat and the tito sweater that has to be the warmest sweater that i have ever wore in my life the tito's christmas ugly sweater i guess they're called and and, yeah. and we have a picture and the funny story about that for everybody watching when we were still not working at rocket mortgage Fieldhouse, our offices were down in huron so we were all in one floor. It's kind of like the same way you get here, but every time we went by to our office, our, a little corner of broadcasting, there was a person from the TV group that used that picture as a screensaver. Don't ask me why. You want to you wanna see tonight <laughs> wearing the Tito's handmade vodka ugly sweater on it, but we look good in it. Hey, what yeah. can I say? We're moving on up, though. We get, we do, we <laughs> I know. Up. These are nice. These are nice. And, of course, obviously, every time that you need more Cavs gear, your trick is invite somebody on from the team shop yeah. for, <laughs> for promotional purposes. And then somehow you end up with new gear, and I, I end up wondering where mine is at the end of the day. And I can't wait till we all get back to normal, I guess. I guess we shouldn't, we shouldn't talk about going back to where we were because that's what got us here. So I think we should get back to our new – a new set of being, right? And for Noche Latina, which is, which is one of the home games that was canceled mm -hmm. when, the, when the season got postponed, we had plans. Remember when, when uh, Amy from, from the team show was at the shop and he showed us this, this go cab sweaters that Homage had made. And I, I went on Instagram and Twitter and say, how many retweets do, we, do I need to get to get a Spanish version of it? Well, we had it ready for, for Noche Latina, and I'm oh, hoping really? that the team shop, or the Cavs team shop, we'll have it, we'll put it out when we come back, when we come back and, and play somehow these games or next season. But we did have, I was successful at making the Vamos Cavs version of, 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 for Noche Latina. So it, 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 it's to be continued. Those are cool. Too. What was it? It's, I mean, Los Cavs was the one in previous. Lot caps is the one that they wear for the shooting shirts they wear. But Homage had made this beautiful sweatshirt that said "Go Cabs" in that retro color, the the, the blue, the, the you know the pastel blue with the black. And I wanted to have them make on, in orange letters "Vamos Cabs," and they did make it. 
and we were ready to put out that T-shirt with our, with our friends at the Caps team shop. But I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll let everybody take a crack at it when, when we go back to, to our daily activities. If it's okay with you, I'd actually like to get one this time, as opposed to you getting all, reaping all the benefits of the gear, <laughs> like, like this show usually works. That sounds cool, actually. That sounds neat. And hopefully we're able to, uh, I mean, it probably won't happen this season, obviously. Uh, even if we do resume play, you know, we, we've heard all the talk. If it happens, it may be a localized spot. Uh, we've heard Orlando. We've heard Las Vegas. Uh, you know, some good news. Uh, J.B. Bickerstaff addressed the media just two days ago, and uh, he revealed that the Cavs today opened their facility for individual workouts. Now, it's not like normal workouts. It certainly isn't team-oriented. He stressed that, look, there's no pressure, but if guys are, you know, itching to get back in the gym, which I, you know, must guarantee that a large majority of these guys want to do, they're able to do that in controlled environments. And from, you know, from what I understand, Rafa, you have to stay, it's one player, one basket with one coach. And the, the guidelines are you have to stay 12 feet apart. Coaches have to wear masks and gloves and uh, it's no frontline coaches. So it's only the, for those of you who are a little bit newer to the NBA, a lot of assistant coaches, uh, you know, eight, nine, 10 assistant coaches, maybe three or four sit on the front bench with the head coach, depends upon the team. The rest sit on the back bench. And from what I understand, no front bench coaches are allowed to participate. So it's really not as much, it's, they're trying to take out the team oriented part of this so that no teams get, a competitive advantage, you know, as some teams are able to get in their gyms, other teams aren't. That's the idea. But if guys want to get individual workouts, it's some a, a glimmer of good news, I think, Rafa, that, hey, some activity is resuming here, even though there are no set permanent plans for trying to get back underway here in the NBA. And I think the most important part is the fact that since the different states have different rules and different ways of reopening, that's why the NBA wants to keep it an evil play, even playing field. And the coaches are not even allowed in the building, like right. front line coaches. That's what J.B. Bickerstaff told, told us uh, a couple of days ago on the, on, the, on the conference call. And I think it's also important that only four players can be at, at Cleveland Clinic courts at the same time, working out with the assistant coaches, which are the, play, the player development part of right. the staff, right? And, and, and I think it, it is, the, from what J.B. Bickerstaff told us, which I think would, it, the best thing to do is, Everything you hear right now is pure speculation because the league has been very straightforward by saying we have no idea. We don't know. There are so many things. It doesn't depend on the NBA to decide when to start. There are so many people that have to actually give the okay, especially the health officials, and, and, and then to figure out how this is going to work. So we, all, we are all optimistic, John, that this is going to be restarted. But at the same time, it is good to see that there's some kind of normalcy starting to come back into our lives, not only because, not only just sports, but you know, the businesses are starting to reopen it and we hope that everybody watching and listening to us will take care of themselves and not just forget about that this is still a pressing situation and we still gotta take care of ourselves with the social distancing, we're wearing our masks, we're washing our hands, we're talking about Tito's handmade vodka, they were they're producing hand sanitizer for, for, for everybody to, to, to take care of themselves. So it is good to see, and it's also good to see, John, that we also see in other sports, in other countries, and even here in the U.S., starting to make a comeback. Yeah, I, I've been watching a little bit of Korean baseball this week. It started on uh, ESPN. Yeah, I agree. Before we, before we go there, Rafa, I, I, I agree with you. I, I'm a little bit wary of a resurgence of this because we're starting to open, you know, and I just hope that you know, you've mentioned the mask, that, that we continue to take precautions. You know, you'd hate to see this come roaring back uh, in a situation where if people aren't as cautious as we've been over the last seven or eight weeks or whatever it is. So uh, I agree with you. Hopefully we don't see a resurgence. And the, I think the league's been playing this perfectly. I, you know, I, I, it's no secret. I think Adam Silver's been terrific uh, since he's been the commissioner of the NBA. And he's right. I mean, the, the virus is going to dictate, you know, our, how we react to it, how our, if there is a resurgence, that's going to dictate when we get back. Everybody's optimistic. Everybody's trying to make this work, which I think is fantastic. But we're going to have to just wait and see uh, how it all plays out. Have you watched any of that? I mean, you have basically, we talked about horse racing before. Horse racing is still 
still alive and well. But have you watched any of that Korean baseball or uh, UFC has a big I'm event coming up tomorrow night too? I'm watching it later. I'm taping it a little bit. Yeah, it's at but five in the morning. Two in the morning, I, five in the morning. I think there's, there is a misconception when people think that just because we haven't had sports, live sports in a while, that people will watch anything. Because I still think I can, I'm a, I love baseball. You think it's my favorite sport. I can watch Little League baseball, but competitive game, competitive yeah. baseball. Maybe because I don't know much of the players and I don't know any of the backstories. I'm, I'm taking me a little longer to, to catch on to it. So I'm still, I'm still going with Bob Greenspan on the Olympic movies. I've been watching all the, all the recaps of all the summer and winter Olympics. It's amazing. It's, a, I, it's amazing to see like guys that I watched when I was, when I was a kid. Like I, I wish you and I had talked about this in this, in this uh, Cavs HQ happy hour presented by Paul Weiser that I wish that when I watch Johan Olaf Koss speed skate in the Olympics in Norway, that there was ice in El Salvador so I could like get into speed skating. You know? First El Salvador born speed skater in, <laughs> in Olympic history. You need to stop. Well, we talked about it on our previous show. For those of you joining us for the first time, that Rafa's been addicted to the Olympic channel. Because it's about the only channel of sports where you don't know who's going to – really, you don't know who's going to win. I mean, <laughs> the NBA, you know who's going to win. Major League Baseball, they're showing the World Series. You know who's going to win. Uh, the Olympic channel is, is serving is serving you quite well. So, as part of the show, we're going to bring on one of our one of our regulars, good buddy. We're going to catch up with Joe Gabriel, uh, the founder of Tavs.com. Uh, he has oh. some stuff that he's, good stuff that he's been working on. Uh, let's bring him in. Joseph. Good to see you, my friend. How you been? It's great to see you guys, man. You're all decked out in your Budweiser gear. I kind of feel like out of, I feel out of place, man. Well, you're the guest. Yeah, you're the guest. I mean, that's you, you'll be all right. We'll get you some stuff. Rafa, I'm sure, I'm sure Rafa's working on a deal as we speak. <laughs> we haven't seen we haven't seen Joe in a while, and now I see why. Now he's become Doctor Joe G, like Doctor Dre. Look, at, he looks like he looks like he's in his recording studio with the piano. <laughs> <in the back. laughs> Working on this new material. Well, I'm trying to I'm trying to learn some piano, just some a little bit. So next time we go to your dad's house, I can play a little bit. I see you frame the chords up there in front of you and everything. That looks nice. That's yeah, cool. well, I'm trying. I'm trying. That's I'm trying cool. to keep myself busy. Hey, uh, I understand you're working on something. Cavs.com never stops, never sleeps. Right, right. I understand you're working on something interesting right now, right? Well, I mean, what we're doing is just to kind of keep in touch with the guys. Uh, we did like a, just a little four question survey uh, asking players, coaches, uh, what they're watching, what they're listening to, uh, any cool online purchases that they've made. Uh, and then their messages for, uh, you know, the frontline workers, essential workers, uh, just messages for people out there uh, going through this crisis. And we've gotten some good responses. And of course, Antonio Lang's been great. Uh, you know, I, I, Dylan Windler is tie dyeing. Uh, shirts right now. <laughs> some of the guys are bored. They're doing some <laughs> stuff. Everyone is watching Ozark. Uh, I can tell you that. Uh, mm. You know, uh, so yeah, so it's going to be fun. Uh, next week, we're going to come out with that. But uh, we're going to, you know, just uh, get in touch with our players and our coaches, let everyone know what they're watching, what they're what they're up to. One of your uh, online purchases and viewing habits uh, been looking like? <laughs> well, mine, uh, my online purchases have been books. Uh, and I bought and I bought the face masks, but I bought like the scarf, the pull-up one, so I can look cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I because I, I don't like the surgical mask. I, I, so I do the thing. I look like I look rather like an outlaw, so I feel cooler that way. And then uh, listening to I've been listening to whole albums. I'm not a whole album kind of guy. Wow. I listen to the whole albums. I, I've been doing. Uh, I did the Beach Boys uh, Pet Sounds. It's classic. What's the, what's the first whole album that you remember listening to? That's a good question. The first whole album I remember listening to was uh, Meatloaf's Bad Out of Hell. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Uh, mine is, uh, and I still think it's one of the it's rumors from Fleetwood Mac. Oh. I think the whole album is just unbelievable. I, that was probably deep. And, I, and I'm telling you because I, it marked me. I was like, oh my God, this whole, I, I, just, I just listened to the whole, to both sides of the LP because this is back in the day with the, with the vinyl. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do, right? Rumor is a classic. I, I, I might go listen to that today. Yeah, that is a great, that is a great album. Great one. Rafa, uh, we've talked about what you've been watching. Uh, Joseph, well, 
We'll get back to Rafa in a moment. Last dance, your thoughts? I mean, everybody's been talking about it. I want to overdo this because it's been uh, – I mean, how many articles? Let's overdo it. What? Let's overdo it. All right. Well, well you're, as a journalist, uh, your thoughts of what you've seen so far? Well, I mean, it, I'm not watching it as a journalist. I'm watching it as a dude. And right. I'll tell you what, like, and I'm watching it as a Cavs fan. And I'll tell you this, I, I didn't like the Bulls then. I'll just be honest. I didn't like the Bulls then. I dislike them as much or more now. <laughs> they're, they're giving me nothing to like them. I mean, I, I love their greatness. But as a Cavs fan, I, I, I didn't like them then. I really didn't. I didn't like them. I didn't like the Pistons. I didn't like the Celtics. I didn't like anyone that stood in the Cavs' way. So it's fascinating. But I, 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 I'm not going to go back and, uh, and like them. Yeah, I mean, to me, the Bulls can come and go. I just never liked Michael Jordan. He was never on my team. And I always want to, I've always been a person that I don't care how great you are. If you're not on my team, you're not. That's it. That's it. So I never, I was never a fan. I was, all the videos, all the shows and all the games they showed against the Knicks, I was there in those days in Madison Square Garden. But I don't remember, like, this might sound bad, but I don't remember admiring. I just hated him. I never liked him. You know what I mean? I, I just and 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 to watch this this autobiography, auto documentary, which I think I want to ask you, Joe, as a journalist that you are, the only one in the room. Doesn't it bother you that it is a story written by the subject, like Ken Burns said? It's like I would like to see a, a clean. All of it, not just what Michael Jordan wants to put out there so we can, so everybody can go, oh my God, Michael Jordan, I want to be like Mike. I wanted to leave it here for the record. I have never wanted to be like Mike. <laughs> There's no way. I was never one of those. Well, here's a, here's a question I have, and it's, and it's, a, and it's kind of about a, per, it, about a person that we all know in a weird way. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Uh, Horace Grant kind of said what he said about the Pistons when they walked off the court and didn't shake hands. Right. And he called them. Uh, it's the quote of the show so far, right? We can right. Uh, yeah. right. A derogatory name. So I wonder, is this a playful thing where if our buddy Rick Mahorn happens to see Horace Grant at an event or a game, is there hard? Is there hard feelings? I or, bet. Or is it just, oh, okay, that was just for the TV? Because looking at Rick Mahorn and knowing Rick Mahorn, as we all want to do, <laughs> <laughs> right, he, will he take that as, oh, that's okay? I, I wonder, because again, uh, like to, to my favorite comedian right now, Roy Wood Jr., said a lot of people are catching strays in this thing. Like Craig Elo's kind of sitting around doing nothing, all of a sudden he's catching strays from this show, so... I wonder if guys that are watching now are kind of having some hurt feelings about some of this stuff. I, you, if you tell me Pistons Bulls, as deep as that rivalry ran, you think that Mahorn's like, oh, I'm okay with that. <laughs> no. There's no way. There's no, you, even on the show, you can see how deep that hatred and anger was. Even Michael still for Isaiah. Isaiah, believe it or not, seems like the most <laughs> okay <laughs> And that, if that'll give you an idea about how, what this stuff's about, Isaiah seems cool and collected in this <laughs> Right. If Isaiah seems like the coolest guy. Because in the 1990s, that was normal in the NBA. I don't understand. What was? The fact that they would they would get into fights, they would just. Yeah. Why is it a big deal that the, peace, that the peace don't didn't shake hands after they got their ass? Beaten it at home. What's the big deal? And 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 what's the why is it that we have to every show so far, every six ep, every episode, they have to make sure to let everybody know that Michael Jordan had nothing to do with Isaiah Thomas not being on the dream team. Come on. I would have liked him a little bit if he had come out and said, you know what, yeah, it was me. Because that was Michael Jordan. I didn't want him. Nobody wanted to play with him. I would be okay with that. Why is every but look at it. Every single episode so far, six of them, they have made it a point for him to say, you know, I have nothing to do with it. No, I no, 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 wasn't mentioned about it. Like, come on. Just, just. Joseph, you got him started. But here, here's my t I'm with you guys in that I was rooting for the Cavs back then. I even believe it. It almost sounds strange to say. I was I'm pulling for the Pistons. 
They beat the Bulls back then. I was rooting for the Blazers, rooting for the Jazz. <laughs> right. The Nick, finals. Everybody. But, but, but come on, Rafa, come on. Or they walk, Six seconds left or eight seconds left. You're going for the finals. Let's take, let's take off. Let's take off. There's eight seconds left. Let's just walk right past them and walk. You don't have an issue with that? Come on. That. The fact that they, you made them walk out of their own court. Why do I want to shake their hands? There's eight seconds left in the game. You thought that was pro – you would feel – you'd be like, good, that's my team. I'm really proud of you guys. Way to represent. I'm, I'm telling you about the Bulls. Huh? The Bulls, why would it bother me that they didn't shake my hand? Come on. I'm going I, to the got to shake your hand. You're both hockey I'm, guys. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm agreeing with you that if I'm the Bulls, I could care less. I could care less, right? But if you're the Pistons, come on. There's no way you can be comfortable with that as a Pistons fan. Like, oh, that was cool. But I, 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 be it, I would never be a pistol fan anyway. But but <laughs> I I don't understand why this is such a big deal. And again, it goes back to the fact that this is Michael Jordan telling his story. And the whole thing about how they ask him to do the cameras and nothing's going to be published unless you say it's okay. And that, that bothers me. Tell the story the way you don't you unfold it. So you don't have to be waiting for Michael Jordan to be the producer, director, and and, and, and screenplay guy. Come on. Like, tell me the story how it happened. Why, why is it such a big deal? I have to plead ignorance here. What did Ken Burns say exactly? That he is not a good thing when the subject of the documentary or of the story is the one writing it. <laughs> it's self-serving. It, it, it's very self-serving, but that's the only way you were going to get this done was with Jordan's 100% blessing. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you another part. In the, one of the first episodes, and this I remember very well because you remember, I grew up a Celtics fan. In one of the first, first episodes, they made a whole episode about how this kid was so wonderful to score 40 or 50 against the Celtics in game one and then came back with 45. There was not one mention of the fact that the Celtics swept the Bulls on that series. Yeah, but it's not, but, I, okay, listen, I'm not, I'm, I'm sort of in your camp on, like, I never grew up a Bull, like I just said, I never rooted for the Bulls, but this isn't about the Celtics, and it's entertaining, isn't it? I mean, it's captured, it's captured everybody's attention. Huh? It's all about putting Michael Jordan, like, he didn't do anything bad or wrong in his life or in a basketball court. So bad, so what if he scored 80 points? He got swept. Why is it such a big deal? I think because, because the point is they're showing this rise to prominence of potentially the greatest player in the history of the game's ever seen. Then again, why do they why do they give LeBron so much heat about getting get losing the first fight the first time he went to the finals? And the first, you know what I mean? And I'm pretty sure if LeBron wrote his documentary, he wouldn't include that part on it, or he would just try to spin it in his own way. I just want to find Joe G's version of the last dance and i want to see how, how a person that has nothing to do or invested on the on the subject will tell me the story as it, as it unfolded but it just it's just all about how great michael jordan was and and the way they the way they they glorify the fact that he played cars till 5 p.m and got up at 7 to go play golf and then got up and then went, and went to practice and play i was like all right that's great. That's him. But that's Michael Jordan telling everybody that that's how cool I was. I don't know. I'm glad there's only four more episodes left. Hey, do you really want to get Rafa wound up? Yes. Yesterday was the anniversary of the shot. Michael Jordan hit the game-winning shot over Craig Elo. Just in case you want to get him wound up a little more. We've heard. We've heard that. We've heard. <laughs> we've heard him comment on that. Multiple times on this show. <laughs> what was he supposed to do? Everybody, Jordan got everybody. Why do you pick on Elo so much? Why? I thought, I did think, go ahead, Rob, if you want. But. I just don't find it nice for people to say, you did everything you did, you did everything you could. He did everything he could. Michael Jordan sport. I think there's a lot of other things that you can look. But I, like, again, going back to, to Michael Jordan making this documentary, I would have loved to see like an after the show to, of what we have heard, even Craig Hilo said about Harper, who said, I never heard even say anything about low to play defense. But Harper on the show says that he asked uh, Wilton that he wanted to guard uh, Michael and they, they put Hilo on him. 
So that, that would be a great insight for everybody to see what the other side of the story is, because you have told me there's three sides of every story. You know, well, your side, my side of the truth, so. I, I agree with you, and it goes back to your point uh, in that you're letting the, you're letting the hero of the story tell his own story. It would have been nice if you had asked Elo, or, you know, again, maybe some of the Cavs, uh, what they thought of that play. But again, you only had Ron Harper, who's Jordan's golf buddy. So you never really heard no, I don't about that about Michael Jordan because they're all, they're all his buddies. So I don't know. I thought, I, I mean, I just thought the way, the, the way it was edited, this is going to happen though throughout the course of, I, I'm sure there are other teams and other players, Celtics, maybe Rafa, you know, who are saying, well, wait a second. This will never. The Larry Bird Celtics will never have cameras following them around. If you look at the Dream Team documentaries, the last person you see in shot is Larry Bird. Please, don't, don't mix apples with oranges here. We, you might see the Celtics of Paul Pierce, but still, I, 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 I think Red Auerbach was still alive. He would never allow that. But there's no way you will see a Celtics in the 80s being followed and all that. Maybe the technology. Right. And that's not, that's not what I was saying. I'm not mixing apples and oranges. I'm just saying that I, I'm sure throughout the course of 10 episodes, there are other teams and other players who are saying, well, wait a second. I wish we would have gotten to explain our side of the story. But that's kind of part and parcel of what you get in a documentary. Oh. About, you know, so particularly now, that I'm sure we're going to get now. Uh, a last dance from the Warriors, a last dance, I'm too, uh, you know, it, it, it's just gonna be a never ending. When I first heard this thing coming out, my first reaction was, I'm not sure I wanna watch that. It would be like watching the Warriors championship, you know, cause I wasn't rooting for them anyway. Then I put myself on the other side. I would love to see the way our 2016 season unfolded because there was so much going on and so much, you know, so much that happened and, and then the way it ended. But I'm sure we have cameras following around, at least in the playoffs. So I'm sure there's something out there. I just hope they don't, there's not another pandemic for another, another last yeah, right. to come out. One thing you also say. notice from the show is, I'll tell you, 90s basketball. Can you imagine yeah. 90s, that type of basketball being played today? I mean, truly, that will never, I can say that type of basketball will never come back. In what way, Joe? Are you talking about the physicality, or what yes. particular are you to what are you referring? Yes, I mean the 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 the, the Pistons, the Knicks. They said we're going to brutalize Jordan every time. They said it. We're going to do this, and they did it. And I mean, the, the hard the fouls were. Yeah, I mean, the, the, what what guys get called for now? I mean, back then the things Lambeer and the Celtics and the Pistons did to each other. That 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 today would just. Uh, I mean, it would just be unheard of. Yeah, I think to, to hear certain folks around the media have the audacity to actually say that Jordan's game would not translate into today's game. Oh, my God. So, so I mean, seri seriously trying to make that argument is so <laughs> comprehension to me on so many levels. First of all, I mean, all the rules, obviously, since his era that have benefited the offense time and time and time again. Scores are higher and higher. You have more possessions. It's taking more shots. There are those who point to the fact that, well, all this stuff came from mid-range. Okay, that's because the game was played at mid-range in those days. I mean, if it was today's game, you don't think that Michael one summer would spend all – right. shooting three, just, like Le, just like LeBron. LeBron, what was the scouting for? LeBron can't keep it let, – leave him shoot outside. Let him shoot outside. LeBron said, okay, that's my weakness. I'm going to come back. I'm going to learn how to hit threes. I'm going to learn how to hit from the outside. And all of a sudden, lay down LeBron's a threat from three. You don't think that would happen to Michael Jordan in today's game? It's the most absurd argument I've ever heard. I, Michael in today's game would be incredible, incredible I to watch. What beats that argument is the way he transcended his game from college to the NBA. That's it. He, totally, he was a totally different player. Yeah, he, he figured he it out. <laughs> I don't want anybody to think that I don't believe that Michael Jordan deserves all the accolades that he, on the basketball court. He is one of the greatest players that I ever seen. But to say that his game wouldn't 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 uh, translate to nowadays is ridiculous. He would live in the foul line. He would average forty points, and he would he would still dominate. His competitiveness and his nature would, would just win. 
The thing about Still, Jordan, well, they, I mean, they, and they talk about it a lot on the show, on The Last Dance, but one summer, all of a sudden, Jordan went from this to all of a sudden being extremely muscular. I mean, one summer he dedicated, do you remember he came back and he was muscular? The next summer, they, they dogged him about being only offense. He came back and won Defensive Player of the Year. I mean, whatever you said he couldn't do, he would just do and then become the best at it. So uh, to say that he wouldn't uh, dominate today's game, of course he would. Of course he would. And everybody just... the contract should thank him for what, for what he did for the shoe business and, and <laughs> with, with his Air Jordan. And that, Joe, when you talk about that, sounds like mm, LeBron, sounds like mm, Kobe, sounds like all the greats who seem to add something to their game each and every year. Giannis is trending in that direction. I mean, he's trying to extend his range and he's reigning MVP, but he said, I, I need to get better, <laughs> you know, and, and that's, that's part of what makes these guys the, the cream of the crop in the NBA. Yeah, and it's what they always say. I mean, all, uh, most players say it, all coaches say it. You get better in the offseason. That's when you improve your game. You, you know, you, you, the fruits of it are during the season, but uh, you get better in the offseason, and that's what Jordan did every year. Joseph Rafa, running out of time. Final thoughts, Joe. Always great to see you. Uh, great to be joining us. Uh, I, I love that your perspective's great because you've been covering the game for so long, and even to see, you know, to those times that we've, you know, been witnessing in the documentary and that you were covering the game at this time, I think it's great and that you're able to, you know, compare and contrast the two eras of basketball. But uh, final thoughts, guys, uh, before we stay so long for the weekend. Uh, for me, it's just take care, everybody. Stay safe, uh, you know, for all, and for all the health workers and essential workers and grocery store workers, man. Great job, and we love you guys. My final thoughts, first of all, I hope that when I look at, the, at my videos of, of the 2020, in 20 years, I don't look at myself and say, what was I wearing? The fashion in the 90s was just, everybody wearing three sizes bigger than what they were supposed to be wearing. Oh, that one about, we're about to finish Nurses Week, and I would be remiss not to congratulate and thank all the frontline workers, all the nurses out there. My daughter, Kiki, nurse practitioner, Kicking butt in Florida and everybody working in emergency rooms and really risking their lives to make sure that we come out and enjoy ours. Gracias. Yeah, and I echo those thoughts, obviously. For those who don't have the luxury of being able to stay at home, uh, who are out there working and, and keeping us rolling, thanks so much for all you do. For Joseph, for Rafa, it's always good joining you guys. Let's stay connected, everybody. Let's continue to do this uh, and enjoy each other and help each other get through this thing. Uh, we're going to do it and come out better. On the other side, uh, this has been Cavs HQ Happy Hour presented by Budweiser. Bye. 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 <laughs>